Hi, I'm Mary Poplin with Boris Effects, and today we're going to go over removing a car from a road. We're going to talk about how the remove works, what the remove does, and we're going to talk about what the remove doesn't do. We're going to turn this shot of this car driving through a snowy mountain into a shot of just a snowy mountain road. This footage is courtesy of Pond5, and they are a wonderful resource for stock footage. However, when you're using stock footage, you're kind of stuck with what you got. The guy who shot this probably didn't have a permit to shoot. He probably didn't have permission to clear the road. And so what we're going to do is we're going to clear the road for him so that we can get the look we want. So the remove tool isn't magic. What it is is instead a very clever algorithm that we're using to examine the planar data that moves behind the object that we're trying to replace and drawing a shape around the object we want to remove and telling Mocha to use those background pixels to replace these foreground pixels. So how does that work? Well, let me show you. So here's our original footage. You can see over here in our effects controls that we have no effect. We're gonna to go to our effect, Mocha by Imagineer Systems and select Mocha Pro. This will put Mocha Pro, the plugin, onto our timeline. The remove tool is only available inside of Mocha Pro. I can launch Mocha Pro and if this is on quarter res, for example, Mocha will give me a warning that tells me this host is not set to full resolution. So, what does that mean? That means that we're actually reading off the timeline inside of After Effects. So let's go to full resolution, and then click Mocha. Because I want all the tracking data I can possibly have in order to solve this shot. So the first thing I'm going to do, because this car is moving over the plane that I need to use to replace the object, I'm going to draw a shape around the car. So I'm going to find where the car is largest in frame, least blurry, and most parallel to the camera, and I'm going to draw a quick shape right around my car. Now for tracking purposes, I'm just going to make a loose shape, and we're going to hit translation scale and rotation only. We're going to turn shear off, and we're going to track backwards. Tracking has been sped up for your convenience, and also so that you don't die of boredom. But tracking a small object like this on a normal computer should be pretty fast. Once our track is complete, we can hit track forwards and track the car off screen. Once our track is complete, we can actually adjust our roto shapes so that we make sure we're following our car as it moves through the scene. We also want to make sure that our roto shape is always encompassing the car's shadow, so here's a good way to do that. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And I'm going to use my Auto Stabilize button, basically this little tool right here, Activate Quick Stabilize Mode. What that will do is that will hold my car in the middle of the screen, and I can see how my rotoshape changes over time. You can use this to very quickly rotoscope without having to do a whole lot of work. Now notice I'm actually pulling my shape out a little wider around the front of the car and the side. That's because there's a shadow on the road, and Mocha will absolutely see that shadow. Because Mocha's a computer, it does exactly what you tell it. So if you tell Mocha that that shadow is part of the background, Mocha's going to believe you. All right, that looks pretty good. It looks like our car is contained. Let's scroll out with our zoom tool. Let's turn our auto stabilize tool off. And now let's track the background. We're going to track translation, scale, rotation, shear, and perspective for the background. We're going to turn our surface tool on because our surface tool is actually different than our shape tool. And our surface tool and its child, the grid tool, will tell us exactly what our track is doing if we align it properly to the plane we're trying to track. It will give us the best idea of what our track is doing. I don't do this for Mocha, I do this for me so that I can tell what my track is doing. We're going to call this layer background, and we're going to call this layer car remove. This is also just for you, but it's also for your coworkers so that they don't murder you when you come in with layer. 1 through 42 unlabeled. Now let's take our car remove and we have to drag it above the background layer. Now the reason I do that is because I want the car to be held out of my background track and Mocha treats everything at the top of the layer pile as closest to the camera and everything at the bottom of the layer pile as furthest from the camera. That means if you rotoscope from your foreground to your background you will always have holdout mats for everything that you're trying to track. I'm going to turn my gear off for my car remove, so I'm not tracking my car tr twice. And we're going to hit track. Once our background is tracked, we can move on to the remove process. So let me turn my mats on, and I'm going to explain to you how Mocha works. We're going to use all of these pixels to replace these pixels. That means this shape 
has to cover the area that this shape is moving across so that we can sample these pixels to replace these pixels. Let me turn this grid and surface tool off. To do that, we click on the Remove tab. In the Remove tab, we're going to tell Mocha to remove the object by turning the gear on on the car removed. Because the lighting is not fluctuating, I do not need to use illumination modeling. We have this auto step tool that will allow you to optimize your render times. So if you want to have Mocha try to figure out the best render time for you, click auto step. And what it'll do is instead of looking at every single frame, Mocha will decide what your auto step should be. Or you can manually set it to look every two frames, every five frames, every 10 frames, etc. The first frame and the last frame is the length of your remove. And frames before and frames after are how many frames Mocha is sampling before and after in order to replace the object. Because the shot is not super long, I'm going to go ahead and leave it at the default, which is the entire length of the shot. But I am going to use auto step. Now I hit render, and if Mocha has done everything correctly for me, I will have removed my car. Now notice in the plugin, it actually doesn't render on the rest of my frames. That's because back in After Effects, we're going to save and close this. And then back in After Effects, I click on my module renders. I click on the render checkbox and use the drop down to remove. Now if I play this inside of After Effects, it will render this through the entirety of my shot. And a big shout out to Pond5 for supplying us with this wonderful stock footage. I am Mary Poplin with Boris Effects. If you have any questions, please visit us at www.borisfx.com. Thanks so much and have a great day.